speaking of Comcast, <laughs> uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, there is going to be a new Minion Land opening up at Universal Studios Florida uh, this summer, and it will include the Minion Cafe. Well, I just have to just say first off before we get into anything that people bash Disney all the time for these heavy IPs in the parks all the time. But I'm sorry, I am so sick and tired of seeing everywhere I go and anything of Universal that has to do with Minions. I don't mind it, a little bit of it, but it is like swallowing everything. And well, it is. And the thing too, and this is my big issue with this Minions Cafe, is that we see Universal do a lot of great stuff, right? Like when, when, when Universal partners with Nintendo, fantastic. When Universal partners with J.K. Rowling to do Harry Potter, fantastic but universal doesn't really take that great of care with their own ip they consistently give us like second and third tier quality stuff when it's minions or any of their own properties like dreamworks it's a lot of this kind of stuff i'm sorry this this looks very cheap to what universal has shown us that they're capable of doing if this was a wizarding world or a nintendo thing it wouldn't look like this i can tell you that right now everybody it would not look like this. And this make, this um, replaces the Monsters Cafe, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it did. Correct? Yes, correct. Right, so they're making kind of a minion land around one of their uh, minion attractions right here. Not the worst idea in the world, but like you said, OG, oh, it's all in the execution. And to be honest, I mean, I think you're right. I think with their own IP, you know, when you don't have that kind of motivating presence, like let's say a James Cameron for Terminator or a J.K. Rowling for Harry Potter, or you know, uh, 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 you know, um, and Mrs. Seuss for you know the Dr. Seuss experience and so forth. When it comes to other people's IP, they they really kind of you know look to make that IP holder happy. But when it comes to their own, they just don't put out the effort, and it's just very strange as to why they don't. Um, uh, this is kind of something I think that will continue to hold them back in this way if they don't keep investing in their in their signature franchises, which they have, you know, a couple of. For example, Jurassic uh, Jurassic World. We'd love to see, um, you know, a, a better capitalization on that idea. Maybe that kind of darker that they have there in. Uh, I believe Beijing, if I'm not mistaken, right? Maybe bring that uh, to to one of your parks uh, here in um, University of Florida or Hollywood. Uh, you know, if it's not Harry Potter, if it's not you know Nintendo, it just seems that they don't really kind of step up to the plate, and that is really unfortunate because that kind of it's a reflection of your brand, it's a reflection of your quality uh, from your Universal Creative Team. Well, yeah. Well, Steve Jobs said it said it best, where he said, "No one is going to take care of your brand like you do." You know, so it's like the these are this is your property, Universal. You own this property. You should go all in, even more so on these because you own it. This is like your thing. You should really go in on it. And um, unfortunately, they don't. It seems like over and over again we see kind of half efforts when it comes to Minions or DreamWorks or these these various properties. Um, so I would like to see them step it up a little bit. This, to me, looks very cheap. Now I will say to give credit to them. While I don't like the design work and the kind of cheapness of the aesthetics, the food offerings are like out of this world great. They look fantastic, like really, really good. Uh, there you go. Yeah, up here, like it, very cute. Like you know, um, well, that one's not very themed. Um, I thought there was more than. <laughs> well, well, you know, okay, they tried. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no, I thought they had like. Didn't they have like minion shaped chicken? Oh gee, I'm sorry. Oh gee, I'm sorry. I'd rather take my chance with the bantha shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of swore they had like minion. Shit. There you go. I could have sworn they had like minion shaped chicken nuggets. I think they do. I've seen those on, 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 on my timeline. But yeah, overall, though, I'm just not impressed. And I just wish that Universal would take their own properties a lot more seriously than they do. You know, well, and especially um, especially when they they call it like DreamWorks or Illuminations. And they kind of did this with with Shrek. And I feel like that's where Shrek kind of got became diminished in a sense because it was like titling it as overall DreamWorks, but they only had Shrek. And now they're kind of doing the same thing with like illuminations. It's like, okay, illuminations and it's just minions and despicable me. I mean, there's, there's still so many, 
films that did well at the box office that I think is still relevant to today's time. I mean, you take the films uh, from Sing. You know, they, they could have easily done something like sort of like how they did the Laugh Floor Comedy Club at uh, Tomorrowland at Magic Kingdom, where you can kind of have guests interacting with the characters and they maybe you do like a like a karaoke type of interaction with with the uh, with the characters or something creative in that nature. It just seems like any time that they're they're relying on, oh yeah, let's do something with illuminations. Oh yeah, let's just go back to the Despicable Me and Minions brand, which I get it. It's ex it it's very popular. People buy into it, but again, it's just I just feel like they're just throwing it in our face, and it's very very. Uh, it's not discreet. I'll say that. Well, one of the things that I was kind of discouraged about learning with Epic Universe was the How to Train Your Dragon uh, boat ride um, is going to be, I'll share my screen real quick, uh, basically kind of like what Legoland has with this kind of like this, you're in a boat and you're squirting at targets and stuff. And it's like, th and this is honestly, Disney's guilty of this too. I mean, full disclosure, this is Web Slingers, the Ninjago thing. I mean, that was a, that was a Legoland kind of ride. It's very cheap. I, again, it's their own property. Like, you think J.K. Rowling would have put up with this shit? Let's be honest. No, no way. Absolutely no, not. There's no freaking way, dude. So, there, there, so yeah. being that you actually brought that up, and that's what a, that's why I feel like Disney isn't really too... Uh, um, worried about epic universe in that sense because when you look at it as a whole it's like yes we're getting a whole entire great theme park which i'm for sure it's still going to be great it's going to be popular it's going to bring in the money there's probably going to be some hard uh, e-ticket uh, attractions at this place but if you look at it the perspective of what you just showed on the screen you can say oh yeah we're getting a high how to train your dragon attraction well automatically you're thinking that it's going to be like a high speed type of hybrid roller coaster where we get to ride on a dragon and all that no you're sitting in a damn boat uh spraying people that's walking along the the path it's like what's the correlation of that well well to be fair i think they are they are building a they are, there is a coaster in that land um is that correct right there is a coaster i there think is. yeah there so is. to be fair then, there is the land is kind of is is directed towards little ones and so it's like okay what experiences i don't give a, i don't give a care about that shit well, it's like well, i'm just saying i mean <laughs> yeah. you you need like a fantasy land type land in, in which to in which to you know kind but of at least the fantasy land dark rides at disneyland are charming like these kind of things are like they're they're eyesores. Like they're, they're it's it's nothing appealing to it. Let's see what the final implementation is before you know going off of three uh, D design concept for another park. You know, I mean, look, Gadgets Go coaster that was an off the shelf coaster, right? And they themed it to the nine when they did, and now it's very very charming. Let's just see. Let's hold. Let's hold. Let's hold back the the criticism. A little bit. I do agree with you. I would much, I would much rather see like you know state of the art ride systems and brand new tech and you know all these kind of custom built things. Uh, but um, you know f for the demographic that will be you know. Uh, but now let me things, now let me. I can understand the decision. But right. let me ask you, fellas, this for the How to Train Your Dragon coaster, is it just going to be like? a regular coaster that's just going to be named after how to train your dragon or is it going to be heavily themed because there is such a thing that if you take something like the Incredicoaster, coaster yeah it has the incredibles tied to it but at the end of the day it's just another roller coaster i don't know what the extent of the theming is i think there will be some bear track po portions uh, but I also think there will be some uh, some heavily themed portions as well. This, I mean, the land actually looks pretty good uh, in in various aspects. We'll see, though. I mean, I do agree with you, George. There there is there is uh, uh, maybe a lack of theming on some some of and these and I do on. apologize for my uh, for my bash towards this, but uh, no, I'm not fine. I'm not in good contact with Comcast right now. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But, yeah, no, that's, that's fair. But here's the other thing, too, though, is that they're setting – well, maybe not even Universal, to be fair. Maybe it's a fandom. But there's there's an expectation out there right now that this thing is going to change the game. This thing is going to destroy the Walt Disney Company. That's the expectation right now, that yeah, this epic universe is supposed – 
it is, yeah. but that's reality on Twitter. I mean, that's, that's what, what I was saying. That. That's what I was saying. When you look at it as a whole, it's saying Epic Universe, a brand new theme park. But when you kind of break each individual attraction down, is it really going to live up to the expectations of what Disney has? Well, because yes, the, the, the narrative out there on social media is this thing is going to, this is Disney needs to respond to this thing. This is an incredible. So that's why when I see stuff like the Legoland squirt ride, I'm like, yeah, well, it's like, wait a minute. yeah, like this is supposed to be the thing that takes the Walt Disney company down. I thought fandom like w- w- now we're talking, you know, I mean, and well, it could, but I don't know. Is you know? it any worse than a raft ride off the shelf, right? Like how the River Rapids was when Animal Kingdom first opened or no, some but of the Animal- blockbuster experiences that were part of that park. No, but Animal Kingdom wasn't billed as like this end all be all park, though. This is billed as like the thing that's going to change the industry. Oh, Disney is shaking in their boots, you know? And that's why when you go into this with that expectation and then you see, okay, they're the Legoland squirt thing, it just doesn't correlate to me. I don't know. I don't know. Expectations are are very high. It's, it's, I think it's very, overly very high. Very high. Well, and I think it's the first done. theme park that has been built in the modern era. You know, we've never had a theme park built domestically uh, within the age of social media on this scale. That and, is true. And with this kind of investment. Because so, the last one was Islands of Adventure, I believe, in 1999, mm-hmm. right after mm-hmm. it just trailing off of Animal Kingdom. Right. So, you know, I, I, I do agree for various reasons. There, there are definitely expectations on this. And it's interesting to, to, to hear reports that maybe even Universal Creative staff are a little bit disgruntled about the state of Epic Universe and, and what they're actually building down there and kind of complaining about the fact that this isn't maybe as epic as has been touted. It's going to be very interesting to see if they can actually rise to the occasion and people will actually go, especially in an economic climate that will have, uh, that will contain headwinds. So it's, 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 um, it is very, very interesting. I, I don't want to necessarily poo poo on this stuff too much though, because sometimes you just, you just never know, right? Some Trey, of things Trey, going- Trey, come on. We've been through this brother. It's Bantha poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, no, you're right. That's true. There are some things. Look, look, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was touted to be the most mind blowing thing ever. And now uh, we have this Galaxy Star Cruiser closing, which was very heavily integrated with this whole thing. And now everybody says Star Wars Wars Galaxy's Edge needs a redo, right? Toontown was looked at to be eh, a little modest overlay. And it was one of the things that was touted on the earnings call. You just never know. When these things are going to pop, it is, it's, it's really like a lightning in a bottle. It, it really, it really can either strike gold or hmm. sh- strike bantha. You know, so it's it can go either yeah. way. But that's a, that's what I love about because a lot of people in the fandom they're not having this conversation about Epic Universe. Nobody wants to discuss this. Everyone wants to just say this thing is not a matter home run. And I like the fact that we're at least questioning stuff yeah. because we are hearing murmurs. We have a source. Uh, that we call do trust me bro is saying that there is issues within universal creative uh, there have been issues within epic universe we're hearing it from mice chat and what have you look at you i think remember too and i don't even blame universal for this but the park was built during the lockdowns and the pandemic with the supply chain shortages and, and inflation it's not like I wouldn't even blame them if there were to be cuts to be made and probably there were cuts made along the way. It would be expected of a company to do that when you're paying way more for steel and all these other supplies than you would have normally. Right. So there's going to be cuts here and there and it kind of jives with what we're hearing from various sources. And it's, um, and it's very similar to what happened with Disney, right? Where they had to make cuts to the product let's say for for the galactic star cruiser or even harmonious when they were forced to as a result of the pandemic does that impact the product epic epic universe to the point where maybe these things are looked at not so in a keen light in the next year or so uh that they that they are when you know when they were when they were hyped up during the development and construction process it's going to be really interesting to see whether or not universal can buck that trend of you know cuts made pandemic era these things open and are perceived differently well and our friend disney glimpses was saying that like it's not wise to build a third park when you have one park that's a half day park with universal studios because disney learned that lesson when it when they Mm -hmm. built animal kingdom you had a couple half day parks in florida and they suffered when animal kingdom came on board there was a lot of cannibalization 
that's a fair point to make. And we made that point many times here on the channel where it's like, okay, you're building a third park. That's fantastic. But you have universal studios proper in Florida. That's a half day experience. So that that's going to impact. I think, you know, you don't have two full day parks right now. You have a day and a half kind of, and then now you're going to add another park. What does that do to the half day park? That's a, well, that's, that's a big question mark. Well, that's even the fandom that was saying, oh, we're now finally going to get a fifth gate at Walt Disney World because Iger had mentioned about a $17 billion investment. And it's like, if you really think of it, a fifth park, a fifth gate, we don't have even enough in the other ones, let alone bring on another one. And it's like, you, as you mentioned, OG, it's just going to keep cannibalizing. It's like you have to get more into the parks you already have right. before taking on another gate. That's why they haven't built another park since Animal Kingdom, I think, is because they saw that cannibalization and they're like, it, it didn't work. We have to flush these other ones out first. And I think that's why it's been so long. And that's that's why I don't think that we're going to see a fifth park at Disney World for a very long time. I, I still hold on to my prediction that Disneyland will get a third gate before Disney World. Gets oh, I, I agree with you with that. I would put I my think, money with a third gate at Disneyland over Walt Disney World. I think World's in the social fit. media era and the reservation era, I think those are different things that maybe – parks experienced in the 1990s i think it, it i think that that whole dynamic might might have changed uh but we will we will definitely see because um you know i mean social media social, social media has been a boon to these parks ever since it was introduced um will that translate with new offerings domestically and will that translate to new days and uh a cannibalization of not just your own parks, but of other parks surrounding it uh, from other companies. We will see because that's a that's a developing story for sure. But absolutely, and uh, really quick, I just have to say, as OG had mentioned, right. a lot of people don't discuss it. You know of what we're discussing, but we do it here on OG fifty five. So definitely, you have to check us out. You gotta you gotta yeah. smash that like button. You gotta subscribe. You just gotta listen to all this this I, juicy, I, but sometimes I, sticky Disney news. And I, I want to ask you guys one more thing. Speaking of juicy. And sticky. Now, this is going to be a controversial topic, but sometimes, like you said, George, sometimes these things have to be talked about. There's been there's a lot of talk, like in community, like pixie dusters and shills. If you defend Disney, a lot of shill stuff out there. You, you you guys have all heard it. YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff, right? And that's fine. I'm not denying there's definitely pixie dusters and shills out there. I'm not even saying there's not. But when it comes to Universal, though, I see a lot of I see a lot of white knighting and defending for Universal a lot. I see people come out of the woodwork to defend this company over everything, but I don't see anyone calling people universal shills. It's just, it's not the same. You just don't see it. Like George, what, what, what do you think? And I'll go to Dre. Like, what do you, what are your thoughts? On, like, why can you be a show for Comcast universal, but you can't be a show for Disney? Why is that? Yeah, I, I really, I honestly feel like people just make up their own roles. And I think it just kind of, it it, 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 it dwindled on to the fact that, with Disney, people look at this company of how it was founded and where it has come from and the, the, the history behind this company and how much is so connected to it with the with the studio and the parks and television and now the streaming service. It's like everything, someone has an opinion on something of it or another, and it's almost like Disney was always put up to the top tier, the creme de la creme, the, the cherry on the top, the icing on the cake for many, many years. And I feel that with that expectation, people then started to nitpick every little thing, especially when social media came about. So it's like it gave them a platform to release their frustration saying, oh, I thought Disney was supposed to be this top-notch big brand company, this this mega corporation. Oh, but look at this. There's some paint chipping over here or the, that light fixture is a little bit loose over there. And it just snowballed into this big thing where it's like, no matter what Disney would do, whether it's for the good or the bad, there's going to be people out there that that will find a negativity in it. Now, as far as with Universal, I don't feel that Universal had that kind of um, long length capability that Disney has had to kind of sustain those type of um pedestal type qualities and i feel like in time especially since now universal is starting to grow and starting to become a front runner with disney it wouldn't surprise me down the road that we would start seeing some uh universal shills um, interesting 
Yeah, well, I think you. I think the universal shills come from this this mentality. I, I think you're right, George. There's a, this kind of mentality around, or this thought process around Disney, and how there's a certain, you know, level of expectation when it comes to, to quality, especially for the price paid and so forth, especially with people's memories of how that product was and what it's developed into now and so forth. And you have some people that are disgruntled, combined with the fact that there's this kind of underdog mentality when supporting Universal, right? Uh, people see it as kind of the scrappy theme park uh, company that can, even though it's part of Comcast, which is one of the largest corporations on the planet. <laughs> but... Yeah, because it is in second place in their theme park division, people look at it differently than they do Disney. Disney, because they set the tone when it comes to the entire industry, and because they're number one, there's a certain, there's a different level of expectation and standard of quality as opposed to Comcast, which is it sits comfortably in number two, right? And I say comfortably because it doesn't have that same that same sure. kind of scrutiny that George alluded to, um, and you have people actively rooting for it because it is the underdog in this situation. Do and it's think, like if you're and it's like if you're at the top, you can't go anywhere but down. And true. it's right. like that. So right. what, do, well, what, do you, what do you what do you think, OG? Well, I was gonna I was gonna ask you guys, and Dre makes a great point here. It's sitting comfortably at number two. Do you think Universal wants to be like is it possible? Because we assumed Universal wants to overtake Disney. Do you think maybe Universal wants to be number two because they can fly into that rate? <laughs> they're making their money, boo. They're still making uh, yeah. money, but if they if they're if they stay number two. They don't got to deal with the drama, though. I think still money. Uh, I think of all the hell and the criticism and and everything that the Walt Disney Company is going through right now. I think Universal is safely where they want to be, not where they have to be. I think that's where they want to be. And it's like, as you had mentioned, they're still bringing in the cash flow. They're staying out of the spotlight. They're staying out of the drama. Yeah. And I think that's where they are. That's where they kind of even add fuel to the fire when they add their little tweets, their, their little jabs at Disney, because it's like, Oh, you're at the top. We're number two, but Hey, look, who's getting the, 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 the jabs here, you know, it's you, not us. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if universal wants to take that. They still want to proceed and grow right. in that competition sense. But as far as claiming that number one spot, I don't know about that. It's, I think, I think they I think they do want to I think they do want to be number one in a few key metrics, one of those being revenue, one of those being visitation of and course. all that. Mm -hmm. But I think they're okay. I think they're okay not being placed in that number one spot kind of universally. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, no, no pun intended. No pun intended, right? Um, but can they accomplish the revenue and all those goals without being seen as I think they an can. actual number one? I think they can. I think they can, yeah. I think they can. I think they, uh, you know, uh, I think they're the the business model um, for Universal right now is 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 pretty. I mean, it's an enviable position to be, and this is why Disney has tried to gear itself towards a more Universal creative type mindset, right? Where it keep where it's it comes to keeping costs down or contained at least, right? When you have uh, when you have uh, greener people at a cheaper price or maybe even experienced people at a cheaper price, you can get uh, you can get better work for less. And there's a whole bunch of things that go along with it. But I, I think I, I I think Universal definitely has the potential um, to be a, a really powerful player in this game that even though we might think of it as number two, they're actually doing very, very well considering their overhead and the revenue generated and so forth. So I think they're, I think, I think they're okay with where they're at They're They definitely have said before, like there was a big poster in the back in, 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 in kind of this backstage area universal, not too long ago. We you know we are uh, like we're, we're, we can be number one or we are trying to be number one. Uh, so there's definitely that mentality when it comes to, uh, customer service, quality of experience, accommodation, all of that. Uh, but um, I think, you know, they, they do benefit greatly uh, do. from being number two, and I think they know mm -hmm. that. 100%. Absolutely. Now, before, before we move on to our next topic, George, I just want to say that I am not a shill, but go ahead and buy Bob Iger's <laughs> book, Ride of a Lifetime, $27, Random House, you guys. Okay? A real... <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 